the Honorable Prime Minister of Macedonia, His Excellency Mr. Nikolai Groevsky, the Honorable Srimati Nirmala Sitaraman, Minister of State with Independent Charge for Commerce and Industry, Mr. Gajendra Khimsa, Industries Minister of the Government of Rajasthan, Mr. Amitabh Khan, Secretary DIPP, Sri Chandrajit Banerjee, Director General of CII, Mr. Ajay Sriram, President of the CII and Chairman and Senior Managing Director of DCM. Sri In fact, I would imagine that perhaps the whole day could come on in trying to get to Rajasthan. Not our fault, the weather gods were just not in our favor. But I am so very glad that for this in a meet which we have deemed as extremely important for us, you have come to Rajasthan. And this is a message that to all your excellencies who have come here to Rajasthan today. I, from the bottom of my heart, on behalf of the state of Rajasthan, welcome you very, very warmly to our state. No, it's not very warm, but but significantly. And so has India. Many fetters of the past have been shared and new friendships have blossomed. Communications and other advances are constantly influencing how we interact with each other. The global village of the 90s has now shrunk to the global neighborhood. And such dramatic changes invariably impinge on the lives of people and at the same time pave the way to new realities, new challenges, and of course, new opportunities. So India has been changing. An ancient civilization that is now awakened to embrace the globe. We are shedding the baggage of the past and all over there is new hope. Our Honorable Prime Minister has shared his vision for our nation and that includes a cleaner, stronger, efficient and most importantly, a compassionate India. We in the States are fine-tuning our policy environment so that the vision of the central government can see fruition. There was a time when there was a huge distance between governments and businesses. The associations and federations considered an appointment with a high level functionary in the government as something, and then the state government, as something to be grateful for. Things were not too easy for the regional governments also, since all controls in engaging with private enterprise, even if domestic, was with the central government. As a result of a major change in thought process, today's states are partners with the center. And businesses, local and foreign, are partners with the states. For all of this, we owe a huge thanks to our Prime Minister and to his council. Today, bodies like the CII are co-travelers uh, with us in development. Every state decides its own growth trajectory. And each state is a microcosm, which if it prospers, then so does the country. The people deserve better, governments need to perform, and businesses need to participate in the development process. And this is really where the competition should be, in performance and in participation. And really, symbiotic as it is, the relationship between industry and government now needs to get more synergetic, each complementing the other. For that, I believe, is the only way forward. So again, on the behalf of the people of Rajasthan, I am extremely delighted to see such enthusiastic participation from governments and businesses. I would also want to especially acknowledge the participation by various friendly countries. Your presence here today is reflective of the support that you are prepared to give to not only our country but also to the state. It brings a dawn of hope and there is a shift in paradigm which all of us are not only experiencing here but today in our country. The world population is estimated to grow from 7 billion today to around 9 billion in the next 35 years. Demand for resource, food, water, is already outstripping the supply. The climate, because of causes natural and of course man-made, is also changing. The uncertainties before us are large 
And so it is important we revisit the mechanisms of government and governance and the manner in which we do business, our consumption patterns, so that we are equipped to actually face the future. Since we are the of the state, we are giving direction to our efforts so that the state can take a quantum leap in the growth and that we can have a place in a milieu that nurtures talent, that ensures access to resource and opportunities by all, for all, in a society that accommodates and cares, among others, for the disadvantaged. True development is only possible through partnerships forged between governments, businesses, and of course, civil society. Rajasthan provides innumerable opportunities for partnerships. This is the country's largest state, and we are larger in size than many major countries. We have already the advantage of space, of rich natural resources, an amazing array of forts and palaces, and an incredible variety of landscape. Arts and crafts of these parts are treasured the world over, and our biomass production is immense in their area. We also enjoy locational advantage. We are near the national capital and position between the markets of the north and the production centers of the south. Most importantly, this is a peaceful and very hospitable state. My vision for Rajasthan is a state with modern infrastructure, expanding opportunities, not only for employment, but for social security, and of course, the quality of human resource. For us, the aspiration of our citizens comes first. Every resident here dreams of a better and brighter tomorrow. And this is what influences our development and also our governance philosophy. We realize that for a better tomorrow, we need to emphasize on economic and social infrastructure, at the same time focus on building capacity, look at climate proofing and securing our advantages in agriculture and animal husbandry, and in urban areas, our priorities on managing the human habitat, solid waste management, water conservation, and recycling, sustainable energy, so that our cities do not burst at the seams. We intend to use our mineral resources with respect, so that we do not unduly burden the environment. While we set ourselves such ambitious goals, we did so with the realization that government alone cannot accomplish this. We are of the view that effective partnerships are the only way to take the state into the future. It is in this backdrop that we are emphasizing partnership in infrastructure, manufacturing, renewable energy, skill development, and urban renewal. Moreover, sectors such as waste to energy, water recycling, and green industries are among our priorities. Rajasthan is expected to witness an infrastructure boom because of the Delhi-Mumbai section of the Golden Quadrilateral Highway Project, the proposed dedicated freight corridor and the Delhi-Mumbai Industrial Corridor, with nearly 40% of the DFC passing through Rajasthan. Opportunities for industrial establishment along this route are immense as the corridor will make Rajasthan easily accessible to western and northern markets. Moreover, the central government has declared its emphasis on smart cities. We in Rajasthan will make full use of such an opportunity and develop not only smart cities, but also knowledge hubs in the vicinity. One of the first tasks we took up was to have in place a policy framework that is modern, investment-friendly, and citizen-centric. It is clear to the state that if jobs in numbers as desired are to be provided, a lion's share of the same has to come from private enterprise, since government needs to now shrink over time. We need now to become facilitators. We need to back away from this and allow business to come to the forefront. We need to forge the partnerships that we've talked about. And with this, in order to put in place an ecosystem for job creation, we went ahead and proposed amendments in the Industrial Disputes Act, the Factories Act, the Contract Labour Act, the Boilers Act, the Apprentice Act, and there are a lot more on the table. On one hand, our efforts should lead to more opportunities for employment, and at the same time, we are providing sufficient safeguards so that the interest of the worker is also kept in mind. 
These amendments have not only been appreciated far and wide, but the Prime Minister's office has advised all states to carry out similar job creation reforms as we have done now in Rajasthan. Our government has set out a target of empowering 15 lakh youth over the next five years by providing them with skills. All vocational training providers in the state are registered with our livelihood corporation and the corporation has partnered 43 business houses so far in training youths in specific trades and not only just training them but linking them to guaranteed jobs at the end of the training program. You can rest assured that our youth are not only qualified but they are also now skilled. We are in touch with ITE Singapore to develop the ITI level into a world-class training and skill development center. And moreover, a full-fledged skills university will be in place quite soon. Drawing from our experience of governance from 2003 to 8, uh, we firmly believe that private sector investments in public infrastructure is the way forward. So PPPs in roads, in mines, in energy, in transportation, and more are just some of the areas that we find promising. Our recent policy pronouncements specifically cater to promoting these partnerships. And we are confident of having in place solar power generation uh, with capacity of 25 GW, 20,000 kilometers of roads, drinking water, a drinking water grid, natural gas distribution, sustainable mining, waste to energy, water recycling, and still more. Our efforts are not just restricted to physical infrastructure. Social infrastructure for us is just as important. Some policy exercises that have been done between 2003 and 8 are paying some dividends now. Our private universities act enables setting up of centers of knowledge and excellence. Rajasthan's quest for partnership includes healthcare, education, and services. The process of re-engineering of procedures is also underway, and archaic rules and laws are being done away with. I am sure that these efforts will go a long way in, but in buttressing Prime Minister Modi's Make in May India campaign with a Make in Rajasthan campaign. I would like to add here that while the visible arm of government is recognized in terms of construction activities or development activities, what is not visible, and I think everyone else will share this with me, and perhaps not acknowledged or even duly appreciated to that extent, is the amount of time, energy and effort that goes into creating a suitable ecosystem or environment for attracting investments and unlocking the potential of our people and our resources. So, we do recognize that the task ahead is mammoth. But if you and I, business and government, governments, walk together, work hand in hand, I believe that there is no obstacle which is insurmountable. So really, together we can. And so, I will just end by saying that I'd like to thank the CII for having given me this opportunity to be here with you all in Jaipur. This morning, we had a very, very fruitful interaction with the National Council of the CII. Over the next two days, through a series of focused discussion sessions, most of the queries that were made in the morning will get answered and your suggestions will all get suitably incorporated. I am sure that these sessions will be fulfilling and useful. Your feedback is very important to us. Please share with us your thoughts and your expectations. And I shall assure you that we will remain open to your suggestions. In November this year, and this is very, very important for us, we shall be working, and in fact we'll be bringing up the resurgent Rajasthan Summit. I invite you all to this summit and I hope that I'm going to get a really positive response from you because I do believe that the future is in cooperation for all of us to work with each other. I'll be reaching out to you and I hope that we will be able to make this a plank for not only the future in your own countries and other governments, but also within the state of Rajasthan. So thank you again very, very much to all of you for having made available uh, your time to us.
for having taken the time to come and be with us today to the ministers, to Mr. Amitabh Khan, to everyone who has made it uh, a huge effort to come and spend time with us today. Thank you again to both the ministers and to all of you who are here with us today.